All right, Doombots, we are ready for part two of the Incredibles review. Now, obviously, these are the Incredibles. We're not going to discuss Frozone or Syndrome as they aren't really part of the team or available or whatever. But we are going to look at the characters' kits. We're going to kind of take a look at where they're going to be useful. And just as I said in the previous video, remember, it's not about who you can get in this game. It's about who you can finish. Uh, any character that you have to stop working towards progressing to that magical seven star is not really worth going crazy for. Like just unlocking a character will matter very early in the game and then become incredibly outdated quickly. Uh, the early stages of the game, as you're leveling, as you're in the 20s, 30s, 40s, you'll see that you're getting a lot more value out of characters because what you're facing off against is similar in power, but they don't really scale up. So keep that in mind. It's not about what you can get. It's about what you can finish uh, as we go into the first character to review on this and uh, the most recently reworked character, Elastigirl. So I've never really covered her kit because previously it just had three abilities. Now she's complete. We can take a quick look at everything she does kind of keep it in mind as we build out the entire team. The first is her basic Elasti Smash. Deals damage to target opponent. It's actually a decent amount of damage on basic and 10% chance to perform a follow-up that hits for some amount of damage. The follow-up has a critical strike chance. You're going to notice that's a big deal with this team. They're trying to do a lot of damage when they take their turns, so that's relatively important. Uh, that's, of course, the level 2. I will always tell you, uh, if you can put alpha ability runes into any character, they're going to be better off because that level 2 is very important. Uh, it usually completes the ability. The level 3 is just more damage. You tend to save those for characters that uh, you're heavily investing in for one reason or another. Uh, her second ability, stretch goals, uh, deal decent damage to target opponent, and uh, increase the duration of a random harmful effect on that character by one turn. If they have multiple, it picks one. If there's only one, obviously that's the one it's going to take. And it can be very good depending on how many harmful effects you're using. So, if, for example, if you use the Dumbo spell and put blind on somebody, this will give them two turns of blind. This can be incredibly helpful. 50% chance to increase the duration of a random helpful effect on her by one turn. That's what you get for the alpha ability materials. And great, uh, depending on how you're using buffs on your team, that could be awesome, but it's really not anything special. It's just generic attack that can extend a debuff. Uh, situationally amazing. Uh, her final ability, uh, deal pretty big chunk of damage to target opponent, transfer one random harmful effect with its duration refreshed from this character to the target. Basically, it just means if you have a random harmful effect, it's not going to expire the second they take their turn. It's going to expire probably at the end of it. That's all that means. Uh, again, that is the ability upgrade at level oh. at level two. Uh, it has a chance of taking a helpful effect from them and giving it to Elastigirl. So kind of the reverse of what her special does, but for more damage and Kind of cute, very situational, so you can use this as an execute, as a big damage attack, or you can use it specifically to swap buffs and debuffs, which can be amazing if you were to do something like, I don't know, rip a taunt off somebody and then give them a defense down or something like that. Could be helpful. She can also take a little bit of a hit. Her stats aren't terrible, so could be really good in clearing off a taunt if you need to get off of a Mordu. Uh, the next is her passive, which she finally has now. When Violet dash or jack jack take damage she gains three percent speed bar goes up to four percent cool uh, i'm noticing something real here speed bar speed meter come on you can you could pick one right like just pick one it's basically the same thing this isn't a special word it's just a slight little typographical error they mean the same thing this goes from three to four when you invest in it now uh, is the difference of that 1% meaningful? It might be later, but in the early game, no. This is just ultimately exactly what it sounds like. A mom coming to protect her kids when they take damage. So obviously, if you have Violet Dash or Jack-Jack on the team, she's going to be better. She's going to take more turns. She's going to be able to throw more debuffs out. Since she's not the major damage dealer of the team, it's a little lackluster, but it's okay. More turns are better, as we've learned from the Kingdom team. The more turns you take, the better off you are. Uh, she also has a leadership ability. She's one of two that this team has. 
uh, anyone on her team gets 2% bonus crit. If you're using an Incredibles team or more Incredibles character, they get 14% bonus crit. Now, you've probably seen this before. This is very similar to what Woody does when he's the leader of the Toy Story team, except crit chance is incredibly helpful and potency and tenacity are more situational. So this just says incredible characters have a higher chance of doing more damage. Clearly, this is a phenomenal leadership ability and I'm very happy we have it now. Had, I had, had she had had this ability earlier at any time, even if we didn't see their characters, we would easily know that uh, she is a relatively good character with her team, but we had to wait for the rework. It's here. All in all, pretty good all around character, but doesn't really shine until she's on her team. Moving to the next character, we have Mr. Incredible. Surprise, the other leader of the team. Taking a quick look as he is a new character, his basic deals some damage to target opponent with a small chance of inflicting offense down. He is the protector or tank of the team, so kind of relevant. If Jack Jack is a teammate, 50% chance to do a follow up that deals 132 or less damage, you know, a small amount. He's the uh, defense type character. You don't expect too much damage out of him, but it's the offense down and maybe a little bit of extra pop damage as it goes shouldn't be too big a deal and you aren't probably going to be using his basic too often because of what the rest of his kit looks like. His special or second ability, uh, gain taunt for two turns. Well, that's great. You're going to have to hit him for a while. Gain two stacks of counterattack. Again, he's not doing much damage, but paper cuts. You know, if you do a lot of small attacks, they're going to add up over time. Uh, increase the magic of one random ability on each Incredibles hero's teammate. That's important because I want to say this now. Uh, in another game I play, there is a character that does something very similar to this very quickly. And I want to remind you that if your characters all are at max energy, like all of their attacks are ready to go, and you use this, that this kind of gets wasted. Thankfully, he's not that quick. His speed isn't very high. So you probably want to wait till every character uses at least one of their special abilities before you taunt with him if you can, just to get the max value out of increasing the magic. And of course, this is right here at the level two. The level three is kind of worth it and getting another counter attack. But again, that is a very, very long time coming. That is a end game build of the character, not something you need to, to truly uh, see him work the way he's supposed to. Uh, and his final ability, Showtime, deal decent chunk of damage to target opponent and all adjacent opponents, call one random ally to assist. It's okay. Uh, the level two gives another random incredible hero ally to assist, so then it becomes two assists, and based on who the characters are, this could be a very meaningful attack, so it's kind of a big deal. Uh, because you don't really have control over who it calls, it may end up calling one of the weaker characters, but that's okay. It's a big single target damage attack, very similar to what uh, Barley does, I believe, from the Onward team. So if you have Barley, you kind of know what this is going to do. It's great. It's uh, a one big four energy attack that will magic. Sorry, four magic attack that will hopefully take down one opponent. And then we have his first passive or his first special ability passive. When any Incredibles hero teammate falls below 50% health, gain taunt for a turn. This is where his kit starts making sense. Uh, anyone who plays Marvel Strike Force knows he looks very similar to Strife. <laughs> uh, he's uh, doing something called a reflexive taunt, which means when someone is taking damage that isn't him, he will stop and protect that. So when you're fighting against him, you need to understand that if you're not capable of immediately taking out a character, uh, you really don't want to proc or make him taunt or all of the work you've put in towards destroying that one character is pretty bad. So depending on what team you're using, you may either want to... Uh, kill him first or you may want to kind of handle any cc or buff clear or helpful effect clear like from elastigirl uh, you may want to save that in case you run into it uh, we'll kind of show it off later and mr incredible gains 15 percent bonus shield from teammates that's a weird phrasing uh, i believe the way it translates is if any teammate gives shield he gains bonus from whatever they would normally give him 
uh, and there is shields, comes from Violet. We'll get into it next when we talk about her. His leadership ability, slightly different. Now, we saw the damaging ability that came from Elastigirl. Here is the defensive ability, and this kind of sets it up for how we're gonna use the teams. It's also relevant to note that when an Incredibles hero gains a harmful effect, a 50% chance that he heals that teammate. Uh, based on his restore. So it's not a big heal, it's kind of like all those other ones where Aladdin might eat an apple or something, uh, but it's a nice little ability, kind of helpful to let them sustain. So what we've seen here while looking at both of the leaders is we've seen what the offensive team or the team that you're gonna control is gonna look like, and that's gonna be leadership to uh, Elastigirl, and he's just a member of the team. On defense, like on uh, Sorcerer's Tournament Defense or Club War Defense, you're probably going to want to make him the leader because tenacity will prevent things uh, from sticking, like maybe downtown villains or any characters that are putting debuffs on. This will prevent them from being affected by debuffs, which is probably a better option on defense. The critical damage is good, obviously. More damage is better, but if your team's kit is designed to debuff characters, stun characters, blind characters, or your spells, uh, these characters will resist them more frequently, which will take away a lot of the axes you have for uh, victory. So you now have seen the two leaders of the team, and you kind of have an idea of where they're used and when you should use which leader. Let's go right into some of the damage dealers. Now the first one, and one of the easiest ones to get through playing the game, is Violet. Now, brand new character, let's take a look. Violet's basic uh, deal damage to target opponent. And I will just keep saying that because the number changes based on your level and investment, so there's no reason to worry about that. But deal damage to target opponent, 30% chance to inflict defense down for two turns. We keep seeing this 30% when it comes to buffs, but it always happens on basics, so we're gonna have to accept that as what the reality is. If this character is affected by stealth, inflict vulnerable. Vulnerable means the next attack that uh, hits that target, the vulnerable target, is a guaranteed crit. So if you line it up right, you're doing the exact kind of damage you want to be doing. Um, that's it, nothing crazy, standard basic, really cool, works with her team, nothing really to talk about. First special, uh, grant all teammates shield. How much shield? It's 402, which is just 402 extra health for the conversation. This number goes up dramatically. She's one of the first characters that is truly putting shields on characters. Uh, sometimes you'll get like 15% shield. This gives a raw number of shield and that number can go up incredibly high. If affected teammate is below 50% health, that shield doubles, specifically doubles. So whatever she would normally put up to a character, she doubles up. And that's kind of a little bit of how this team works. If one of the characters go to 50%, the first thing that happens is uh, Mr. Incredible Taunts. The second thing that happens is she can shield that other character, giving them a little bit more uh, safety while the other uh, char characters are beating up on Mr. Incredible. Uh, grant all teammates defense up for two terms. This is probably one of the first abilities you should upgrade on the team uh, because it is a saving grace for not only a single character, but prevents a lot of damage coming forward in the future. It's a three energy or magic ability, so it's not going to take too long for it to come back. Uh, the earlier you do it, the better off you're going to be. It gives you a chance of having another uh, turn to cast it sooner. Uh, her last special, uh, this is inherently something you don't necessarily want to do on turn one. So she's a character where you are going to be using your basic a lot on, unlike a lot of other characters. Gain stealth for two turns, gain evasion, restore health to this character. Obviously, you don't want to do this on turn one, because if she gains stealth on turn one, sure, she can't be hit, but she's not gaining health. She's The evasion doesn't matter. She's not that squishy. Her job is to be basicing. So this also only costs two, so you can use it freely, but in general, what I would do with Violet is probably lead with her, her second ability or her special that puts shields up, just to make sure everyone has a, or someone has a little bit extra health, put defense up on a team, and then use her basic until a time where you probably need to save her, then I would use this ability. This team is very built around sustain, uh, and when you're controlling it, you have a lot of tiny little decisions you get to make that will make it very hard for people, especially in PvP Arena, 
to uh, overcome if they are fighting at parity or so. That's it. I just wouldn't use this first kind of only takeaway here. Uh, we have a passive, which is an energy passive, so it only happens once every couple turns. Keep in mind, when a character gains one magic, it affects all of their abilities. So if she, all of her abilities are on cooldown, uh, including her passive, and Mr. Incredible decides to taunt and give everyone one magic, that will increase the passive energy too, if it propped. Uh, and this, of course, only happens when a teammate falls below 50% health, 75% chance to grant them a ton of shield. As we've already seen, shield is huge because it's not health, it goes over health. Uh, shield is not affected by any defensive stats, so it's just a flat barrier of damage. Uh, you do 100% of the damage you should do to shield uh, because it's not, like I said, not affected by your character's defense or any effects. If you hit the character, whatever the damage number it says you would do, you do. No worry about calculations. Uh, when ally dash falls below 50% health, grant a shield uh, to dash. When other incredible hero teammates fall below 50% health, grant them a shield. Uh, this is additive, just so you know. So this will happen no matter what. In addition, these other things happen. So she's just throwing out shields on the entire team. The team has a lot of extra health. They have a lot of healing built into them. All in all, she's a great character, but she's not a damage dealer. She's somewhat of a controller kind of character she supports the team through shields and she kind of helps your opponents uh do less damage that's her role in this uh, but we are about to look at the two damage dealers of this team the two major damage dealers of this team as we look at dash and jack jack now dash dash is something else I'm going to show something off. I don't usually show these because the numbers don't actually tend to matter because they're based on how much investment. And unless you can show a max investment version of the character, these numbers technically can mean anything. You know, gear, they all change. There is one thing, however, that you see immediately. And if you haven't noticed it yet, it's because my mouse is over it. Da Dash has 115 speed. That's the highest base speed in the game. And it's only going to go up as you put more gear into him. He is very quick. He is taking a lot of turns. Uh, in addition, he actually does a pretty good amount of damage. So kind of think of all of the characters that are benefiting from being on the kingdom team. They're all put together. They're in, um, they're in dash. So just throwing that out there. Looking at his basic uh, attack, you know, deal damage to target opponent, 50% chance to chain, uh, gain one charge for each hit up to a maximum of 10, gain double charges on critical strikes. His basic, every time it hits anybody, he's getting charges and we're gonna find out what those charges do. But as a general note, you're probably not gonna be using his basic too often because they do gain charges, but a lot of times you don't need many charges to get the max value out of his next abilities. Uh, his special, heads up, deal damage to target opponent, five times. You may have seen this before on characters like Zerg. Hitting a character multiple times is very good. Gain one charge for each hit, doubled on critical strikes, up to a maximum of 10. 10% bonus crit chance per incredible hero's allies. Now, you're going to have 40% with a full Incredibles team. He's going to hit a lot and very hard. So this number, even though it's a little bit lower than what his basic shows, and that's really all you can see, 38, 25, you know the scalability will change, so this number will never do more than that basic, but it will hit more frequently, he will have more charges, he has a very high chance of critting on this team, he's going to hit frequently and for a lot of damage. Uh, his attacks are probably going to bring a lot of characters to 50%, so in mirror matches you have to be a little bit careful in how you use him, but in general, big damage attacks, and he's doing it often enough that this three energy is basically what an average character would experience over two turns. He's so fast that it's likely that he can do this attack before characters like Mr. Incredible get a second turn. You know what I mean? He's very quick. Moving into his next attack, or his last attack, special, ultimate, whatever you want to call it, deal big damage to target opponent. For each charge on this character, chain an additional opponent, dealing up to 60 damage lose charge. This is another example of a character and a full team that has been designed to not just 
do the big damage attack first. Don't you don't always click the button when it's on cooldown. Even it's even its cooldown, its five magic cost tells you this is a very big attack for a very important purpose. You're supposed to use his special and his basic relatively early until you need to use this ability. The biggest benefit of this ability is uh, it chains to an additional opponent from each hit. So if you start with a character in the middle and it chains to the left or to the right, it has a chance of chaining backwards or forwards. If you have four charges, five charges, six charges, it's going to hit uh, many characters. It might not hit everybody because it might not be able to. It might rebound or something like that. But ultimately, this attack is going to do a lot of damage. And more importantly, it's going to get beyond a, uh, a taunt. So if there's that one taunt in the way and you know that there's a character you got to get through, this is the time where you do that attack to make sure you hit everybody. As a note, uh, level two for each critical gain one charge on ability end. So it refills itself and his charge bar as you go. There's something else with the charges that are a little bit relevant, which is why I was saying you probably don't want to use this ability too often, but it's not ultimately going to matter, and that's his passive. Uh, gain 10% bonus evasion for each charge on this character. So, at the beginning of dash, I said, well, you're probably going to still use the abilities because the charges aren't uh, that problematic you don't need to build them up because they're going to build themselves up all the time 10 percent bonus evasion for each charge means that you can get up to 60 percent bonus evasion he can almost never get hit and that's a great feature but not immediately you know unless you're worried about dash getting one shot by an attack from zerg or something that evasion bonus is going to matter a lot not to mention that the level 2 ability increased speed bar by 10% on gaining a charge. He already has the fastest speed in the game. He already does a lot of damage. Every attack he does gains him a charge. He is going to be taking so many turns. Dash is an amazing character outside of his team. Inside of his team, he might be one of the uh, first S-tier characters since the game has gone global. There are characters that do good damage. There are characters that are very good at tanking. Dash just seems to be the speediest character and the most turns you can take in one character. So all in all, Dash is aces and probably the most important character on the team until we see Jack-Jack. Uh, first of all, Jack-Jack is adorable. That's it. No notes. He is adorable. We all want Jack-Jack. Second... Look at his abilities. Basic is called Pew Pew, which is also adorable. This is amazing. Deal damage target opponent, 50% chance to inflict continuous damage, dealing damage uh, up to 50 over two turns. 20% chance to do it again. Uh, chance to perform extra attacks increased by 20% for each incredible hero's ally. Let's do some quick math on this. How many incredible hero's allies are on a full Incredibles team? Four, 80%, 100% chance to hit again. Jack-Jack's basic is mean. He's adorable and mean. He's both of the best things. It's called Pew Pew. All right. Polymorph. Sorry, I love this character. Deal 150 damage to target opponent over three hits. Over three hits means it's probably about 50 each, which is on par with some of the other attacks you see. 50% chance to instead attack target opponent with one of Jack-Jack's randomly selected powers, of which there are three. At first, there is Monster Jack-Jack dealing pretty decent damage target opponent, and giving them vulnerable, which we've already discussed. Fire Jack-Jack, deal damage, continuous damage, no notes there. Metal Jack-Jack, and one of the reasons you want to upgrade this immediately is deal damage, probably big damage, uh, at least as much as Monster Jack-Jack, and inflict stun for two turns. That's a two turn stun. That character's use is for two turns. This is amazing. Jack-Jack's amazing. It's called Polymorph, which is a word he definitely can't pronounce because he's a baby. Last special, uh, which, just take a quick look at the graphic, is also adorable, called Jack-Jack Attack. Uh, deal kind of the same as the previous attack, 125 damage over three hits. Convert up to one helpful effect on each target to the opposite harmful effect. Inflict continuous damage. 
someone's someone's taunting or there's a facilier around and someone has a bunch of heal stacks nope not anymore now it's a bleed stack now it's a continuous damage stack that's it jack jack just this is not an amazing ability but situationally this can turn the tide like what what happens to a defense up when it becomes a defense down what happens to a crit up when it becomes a crit down he can single out one character, do a pretty decent chunk of damage to them, and also, over three hits, uh, flip three effects. This is, all in all, a ridiculous character. He does great damage based on his base numbers, uh, he has amazing utility, and every aspect of what these characters do lean into the entire team as a whole. Uh, as they are doing a lot of damage and taking a lot of extra turns, every time any of them take damage, other things happen. This is one of the first complete teams where their kits seem to have been designed specifically to work with and for each other team looks great and that's pretty much all i can show you right now i i would like to show you a clip from my stream last night where someone had a completed team they were all about five or six star but i beat them uh, and that's not because my team is better, and that's not because I'm a better player, and that's not because this team wasn't worth investing in. It was because the person who unlocked this team had four or five stars on a good number of the characters, and then they just unlocked Jack-Jack and Dash, and they were about four star, and they were, you know, level 45, gear tier four or five each. They weren't truly invested in so I wasn't really beating up this team. I was beating up a small child in the playground. And that's no offense to the person who bought them, but that team is not ready for prime time until, as I've said, you've completed them. So while we're looking at these characters' kits and how amazing they are, I would like to finally remind you one last time, these characters are great. If you want to spend money to unlock them, that is absolutely phenomenal. But I'm asking, please, you understand, it is not if you can unlock the character, it is if you can finish the character. So, a four-star version of the Incredibles team will be an absolutely phenomenal team until you hit level 40, 45, 50. Because all of the other teams you're going to be facing off against, all of those downtown villains characters, all the kingdom teams, those teams don't have a cap. Those teams can be four star and you might beat them. You might even beat them at five star. But once six star starts rolling around, once seven star, the gear tier is not going to matter. Your stars matter so much in this game that if you cannot work on the characters, you're probably better off just leaving them until you can. That doesn't mean you don't unlock them. That doesn't mean you don't enjoy the events as they come and use them for something, whether it be as a team for Club War or uh, maybe one or two of the characters are very useful in the tower that you're working on right now great but don't lean into these characters especially if you have limited access to resources in the game they are kind of unlock now deal with later sort of team and this event will come back usually once every three months so just kind of plan out over the course of two or three events your completion of this team and you can use them as well that said if you are willing to spend money go go now go 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 I don't ever tell people to spend money. You know that. This team is great. I've spent some. I will continue to spend more. And the second a Jack-Jack offer comes up, I promise you I will buy it. Anyway, uh, we'll make a video about it. So comment below and let me know what you think of this team. Uh, I've already given you all the information I can about what I think most players should do. But maybe you're like, no, Tony, I'm buying them. They're cool. Have fun with them. Maybe you've unlocked them. You're level 20 and they're doing great for you. That's going to be great. I look forward to it. But just let me know. And as always, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli. And I'll catch you later.